Hi, I'm David Petrito with Make Something, and this is my second channel. Over on my first channel, we have woodworking tutorials and projects. Here, we talk about stuff, and today, we're gonna talk about growing your YouTube channel. I will admit, I'm making this video for selfish reasons. I get asked all the time if I'll critique channels and give advice. I don't feel comfortable critiquing other people's work, and I just don't like it. So I'm making this video as a reference to send people and to help other people grow their YouTube channel. You're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you a valuable list of resources that I use to help grow my channel. I think I'm gonna make about four or five videos in this series, and in this video, we're gonna talk about growing your YouTube channel. Coming up, we'll do entire videos on production, comments, equipment, how I make money, getting sponsorships and brand deals. So that's why you're gonna to wanna to subscribe to this channel to be notified when those videos come out. And oh yeah, I'll get back to my regular vlog here shortly. So today, here are the five things that we're gonna talk about. Number one, making great content. Number two, thumbnails and titles. Number three, using social networks. Number four, search engine optimization and analytics. And number five, goals. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the most important thing, and that is make great shareable content. To do that, you have to either connect with the viewer, solve a problem, entertain, inform, or create a reaction. If you want your channel to grow, you have to ask yourself, why would somebody share your video? Making great videos takes time and refinement. You have to find your voice and your style, and that may take many videos. So the sooner you get started, the sooner you start to find your voice and the style that you like doing, and the style that connects with the viewers. You have to look and see what's working and what's not working, and make changes based on past videos. It took me almost two years before I found my voice and my style and before my channel actually started growing. Even after that, I still continue to refine my style and change what I'm doing. That's because I'm looking to see what works and what I enjoy making the most. And that's gonna change over time. I'll continue to change and refine as I look for happiness and success. And those two things are different. Personality. People will watch a video if they connect with the host, even if they don't care about the subject. Think about home improvement shows and flipping house shows. Most of us will never do that to our homes. We watch because we enjoy the host and their personality. Making great videos doesn't mean great production. It means making great content. I'll repeat, making great videos doesn't mean great production. It means making great content. All right, next we're gonna talk about thumbnails and titles. When you log into YouTube, you're presented with dozens of choices. You have to give the user a reason to click on your video over the others. There are many great theories on what a thumbnail should look like, colors, to use text or not. I'll post a link to a great article down below in the description. The thumbnail should stand out, but it shouldn't be too obnoxious. It needs to represent the content. So if you throw a thumbnail up there of some beautiful person in swimwear, and that's not what your video is about, those people are going to leave your video right away and you're going to lose their trust. It must represent the content. YouTube favors watch time over views and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Your thumbnail needs to be enticing. I cannot stress that enough. Your thumbnail is the advertisement for your videos and you're competing against dozens of other videos on that page. Thumbnails mean everything. Not everybody is a graphic designer, so if you need help designing a thumbnail, check out fiverr.com and see if you can find somebody to make you a Photoshop or GIMP template. And like your thumbnails, your title must be enticing. It should lure viewers in. Think of it as a newspaper headline. And like the thumbnail, it needs to represent the video and not be too clickbaity, otherwise you'll lose subscribers. It should also contain SEO keywords, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It's definitely a balance of using the right keywords and also writing a great headline. Titles and thumbnails should not be an afterthought. You need to spend time on the perfect headline and the perfect thumbnail. I mean, how are you gonna get people to watch your video if they don't click through? All right, number three, social networks. If you wanna get the word out about your videos, you need to build up your social network. Choose the social media outlets that speak to you and your audience. I personally use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest. These networks may or may not work for you. You need to know where your audience is and what you like to use. And like YouTube, all these networks need time to grow. There's no magical formula to get 10,000 Twitter followers right away. And as they grow, you have a bigger audience to share your videos with. Like I said before, everything takes time. Details on how to grow these social networks is beyond the scope of this video, but here's what works for me. Become an authority figure in your community. 
add value. Don't just use them to brag and promote yourself. Being too businessy and promotional is a good way to lose followers. So what you need to do is find great articles that your community will enjoy and share them. Find other people that are doing something similar to you that your audience will find value in and share that. Promote others. You can't always be promoting yourself. You have to add value. And with value comes trust. You also want to interact with other people in your community, whether they're just followers of you or they're uh, content creators like you. You want to get involved in the conversation, but you don't want to be pushy. You want to add value. Value is the key word here. Add value to the conversation. Contribute. Do not automate posts and treat each platform separately. People can sniff out robots. People aren't following you on Twitter to follow a robot. They're following you and your personality. So you're gonna to talk to your Twitter audience different than you're gonna to talk to your Instagram audience. And that's gonna be different than you talk to your Facebook audience and Pinterest and Snapchat. Treat each one separate and talk directly to those people in that community. So when it does come time to share a video that you made on Twitter or Facebook or wherever, don't just say, hey, I made a new video, here's the link. Give them a reason to click on the link. Again, this is like writing a headline, but just for Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. You have to give them a reason to leave that platform to go watch your video. The key to social networks is value and knowing how to speak to your audience. All right, number four, SEO and analytics. This is a big one. This is a huge subject and there are entire books written on it and we're just barely going to brush the surface. I mean, barely. SEO stands for search engine optimization. So what that means is showing up in the search results and the recommended video. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world behind Google. Higher than Bing and higher than Yahoo, which are the same thing, I think. How YouTube ranks your videos within the search results is a secret algorithm. And YouTube is not going to come out and say, this is our algorithm, but they do have guidelines for you to follow. So for example, let's say you want to make how to make a monster pillow video. So when someone goes to YouTube and searches for how to make a monster pillow, you want your video to show up at the top of the list so people will click on your video. You want to figure out how to get to the top of the list and you also want to have a better thumbnail and title than the other videos that you're competing against. So before we dig into SEO just a little bit more, I want to say that although it is important, making great content is so much more important. If your videos are crap, it doesn't matter if you show up first in the results. You have to make good content. Not all videos are made to be timeless or to show up in search results. So for example, current events over the long term or vlogs, they're, they're not made to be searchable, they're made for that particular day. But the videos that I'm talking about are videos that you want to live for a long time and continuously get views. If you want your videos to be timeless, you have to make your videos to fit that bill. So don't talk about current events in your videos if you want somebody to watch your video two years down the road. The most important thing you can do to be found in search is write proper titles, descriptions, and tags. Again, proper title means everything. The keywords in that title should be repeated in the description and also in the tag. Keywords are words and phrases that people are searching for when they click in that little search box. For example, monster pillows and how to. Keywords, titles, descriptions, and tags they're important, but they're only part of how Google ranks your videos in the search results and the recommended video section. Newer videos will tend to rank higher than older videos, but not always. Engagement is a big player in how YouTube ranks your videos. Videos with tons of comments and likes and dislikes will rank higher than videos without tons of comments and likes and dislikes. Why is that? Because if people are commenting and liking and disliking your video, YouTube will think that is relevant and that your video has good information in it that people need to see. YouTube loves videos that people respond to. Good comments, bad comments, likes, and dislikes. That means trolls are a good thing, somewhat. How do you get people to comment on your video? Just ask them a question. Ask about future videos. Ask about advice or what they think about what you did. Just ask them a question that gives people a reason to comment. Ask them to like your video so they have a reason to click on that thumbs up. Videos with lots of views and watch time will tend to rank higher than videos with low number of views and watch time, but not always. So yes, popular videos will rank better. It's a case of the rich getting richer, but you have to deal with that. Everything takes time, so you have to give yourself time to build up your channel. You need to have patience and allow time for your channel to grow. For some, it takes years. 
Another thing is having a whole bunch of videos on one particular topic will help you rank better for that topic. If you make a whole bunch of videos on one topic, YouTube will think you're an authoritative figure on that subject and then will rank you higher than others when people search for that term or phrase or keyword. So because of this, if you want to cover a broad range of subjects, you might want to think about separating those into separate YouTube channels. For example, I make woodworking videos on my main channel. If I want to do some photography tutorials, I might want to think about setting up a new channel just for photography. That way YouTube and the viewers are not confused. So let's say you're like me and you have a woodworking channel, but then you want to do a photography tutorial and you put that out on your woodworking channel. So then a user that lands on on your YouTube homepage for the first time, they'll see that your latest video is a photography video and not woodworking and they might not subscribe because they might not know that your channel is dedicated to woodworking. Same with YouTube. YouTube may not then show you high up in the rankings for woodworking because it doesn't know if you're a photography channel or a woodworking channel now. That's why you need to stick to one subject. And that's why I started this second channel. Over on my main channel we do woodworking videos and on this channel we do vlogs and talkies and that doesn't confuse my YouTube viewers and YouTube itself. Again, there will always be exceptions to the rules. There are plenty of channels out there that are successful and rank high for multiple subjects. But I'm talking generally overall and for smaller channels. You want to use your analytics to see who your audience is. If you dig into your YouTube analytics, you can see the age range of your viewers. You can see the gender, their location, whether or not they're on mobile or desktop. Use that to dictate the type of content that you make so you can talk directly to your viewers. Use your analytics to see which videos get a response. You can see when people drop out of a video and if people are always dropping out when you talk about this certain thing, maybe you shouldn't talk about that certain thing anymore. You can see which videos have the most comments. You can see which videos have the most likes or the most dislikes and that can help you decide on what type of content to make. But again, you have to make the content that you love. And sometimes that goes against the numbers. If you don't make content that you love, your passion won't be there and it's not going to be very fun for you. So you have to see what works and what doesn't. It's a constant game of studying. We tend to focus on the big numbers, subscribers and views, but YouTube focuses on watch time. So if somebody clicks on your video and then stops right away to go watch the next video, you got a view but you did not get a lot of watch time. And that's why YouTube favors watch time over views. So making a whole bunch of short 30 second videos to get a bunch of views is not really going to help you. Your AdSense is actually going to be lower. If you're worried about making money with AdSense, you should focus on longer content. We'll get into AdSense and making money in another video. So that's why you want to subscribe so you'll be notified when that video comes out. YouTube rewards people who bring to the platform and keeps them on the platform. So when you release a video and that email or that, that phone notification goes out saying so and so released a new video and it brings that person to their computer to the phone and they start watching a video and then after your video they watch maybe your next video or somebody else's video. YouTube is going to reward people that bring people to the platform and stay there and that's why viewing session is so important and that's why cards and annotations are also important because once your video is done you don't want the user to leave. You actually want them to watch another video. It could be your video or it could be somebody else's video but you want to keep that user on the platform. People who bring lots of watch time and viewers to the platform get rewarded in the search and recommended videos. Once again, SEO and analytics is a huge topic but it's not nearly as important as making great content. Before we get to the rest of the video, I want to tell you about my main channel, Make Something. Over there we have woodworking projects and tutorials so please check it out and subscribe. If you like what I do and you want to help support me, check out my Patreon page. Patreon members get extended vlogs every week. Plus, Patreon members are eligible for the weekly giveaways and a lot more so check that out. Now let's get back to the video on growing your YouTube channel. All right. Number five, goals and final thoughts. You need to ask yourself what your purpose of your channel is. Why are you making videos? Write this purpose down and use it as your about section on YouTube. And then every time you make a new video, ask yourself, does it fit this purpose? In the beginning, don't get too overwhelmed with trying to decipher analytics. Just focus more on making great content and the analytics will come naturally over time. Once you start to find your voice, then you can dig into the numbers a little bit more. Don't be afraid to change over time. You're finding your voice. You're refining your content. 
Listen to your audience for advice, but remember to always make the content that you want to make. Making videos you don't enjoy is definitely going in the wrong direction. Don't let one person's advice dictate on how you make a video, but if a whole bunch of people speak up about something, then maybe it's time for you to rethink how you do things. And when it is time for you to make a change to your channel, some people are not going to like it, and that's okay. I've done this many times. If they don't like your videos, there are millions of other videos that they can go watch on YouTube. There's something out there for everybody. Even though it may feel weird at first, it's okay to ask your viewers to thumbs up or to leave a comment or to share your video. It definitely helps. If you want your channel to grow and you are serious about this, you have to be a student of the game. And yes, I do consider this a game. You can win and you can lose. A couple of important subjects we didn't talk about. You want to look into the importance of creating playlists and titling those playlists and giving those playlists uh, a good description. Playlists also show up in search results, so take a look into that. Another thing to help grow your channel pretty fast is collaborations. But you want to look for people outside of your field. So if you're a basket maker and you make basket making videos, you might not want to collaborate with another basket maker. You might want to collaborate with somebody else. You might want to collaborate with a cooking channel and figure out how the two of you can make a video together and share your audience. Because those two channels will have completely different audiences and there won't be that much overlap. And that's a great way to grow your channel really fast. So again, find collaborators outside of your circle. Another thing we haven't touched on is branding. Branding is really important and it's something that we'll go into more depth in a future video. So like I mentioned earlier, this is the first video in a series. So you're going to want to subscribe because in future videos we're going to talk about dealing with comments, we're going to talk about production, equipment, how to make money on YouTube, getting sponsorships and brand deals, and what to charge them. So please subscribe. What works for me may not work for you. Everybody's situation is different. There is no one way to be successful. And that's why you, there's so many podcasts on entrepreneurship. There's so many books on it. There's so many uh, bloggers and vloggers and articles written on, on this stuff because there is no one magical formula. Everybody's situation is different. So do what works for you. So notice how I didn't talk about production and equipment. That stuff comes naturally over time as you develop your style. Focus more on making great content. So watch and learn from others outside of your circle. So I make woodworking videos. I rarely watch woodworking videos anymore unless those thumbnails and titles are super enticing. But what I do watch is videos outside my circle. Science videos, entertainment videos, comedy videos. And I pull elements for them and try to bring them into my channel. So what I'm saying is it's okay to pull inspiration from videos but you might want to look outside your circle. That way you're not copying somebody else who's also doing the same thing as you. So what have we talked about? Make great content. Make content that's shareable. Connect with a viewer. Create engagement. Growth takes time. Make interesting thumbnails. Make your titles curious. Write amazing headlines. Grow your social networks. Bring value to those social networks, but don't brag or be too promotional. Repeat the keywords from your titles in the description and tags. Write great descriptions. Know your audience and speak directly to them. Stick to the main subject of your channel. Save experimental content and off the wall subjects for a second channel. Many of you are way smarter than me and way more successful than me. So if I missed anything or if I got anything wrong, please let me know in the comments down below or just share your experiences on what has worked for you to help everybody else that's reading the comments. So a couple of key resources that I use to help me grow my channel. One is the YouTube Creator Academy. Please watch every video. There's a lot of gamer videos in there, but watch them anyway because there's some great information and tips in there on how to connect with your audience. Another great channel you should check out is Video Creators with Tim Schmoyer. He has tons and tons of great tips and tricks every week. An article you should check out is The Definitive Guide to Making YouTube Thumbnails. It's a really great resource. By the same author, he has an article called What the Fuck is Watch Time? Search for articles on how to write great headlines. The Patreon blog is a great resource of amazing articles articles on how to connect with your audience. Gary Vaynerchuk, he's one of my favorite authors. I've read every single one of his books. He has a great YouTube channel that you should check out. Pat Flynn, the host of the Smart Passive Income podcast. Listen to that podcast. There's so much great stuff on how to make money on being a creator. Excellent stuff. He's been doing it for years and years and he knows what he's talking about. Another uh, website to check out is Real SEO, which I think is now called Tubular Insights. Bunch of great articles in there. You're going to want to subscribe to that RSS feed. Please subscribe. Let me know what I missed in the comments down below. Support me on Patreon if you think I've earned it. Check out my main channel, Make Something, if you're into woodworking tutorials. As always, be safe, be passionate, and make something. How to price your work. Whether you're making a piece of furniture or monster pillows you sell at craft shows, you have to have a day rate. 
everything takes at least one day to make. Your day rate will change over the course of time. For example, my day rate used to be $500 a day. Now, my